you meet somebody on the road and they ask you what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, what is that one thing that stood out to you that you can tell that person? Anybody? Obed, you want to say what? <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember. I know we talked about it a lot, but we said to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. We had some contentions between baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I'm trying to remember, but I'm so sorry. I can't remember everything. But I know, I think to be baptized in the Holy Spirit means to have the Holy Spirit like take complete like to cover to consume you not yeah some as like that we have the indwelling of the holy spirit as believers we are sealed with the holy spirit all of us when we give our lives to christ but when we are baptized with the holy spirit we allow him to take control over us we allow him to consume us we are immersed in him and we become filled with his power and we learn that is actually very important because as in the examples of the apostles they had doubts spreading the word of God and they were not like ready yet. Peter was still denying Jesus but after the Holy Spirit came upon them, they received the power to do his work and we need the Holy Spirit's baptism to have the power to do the work of God. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for him? That's a very beautiful summary. So today's topic is digital evangelism. So this is going to, it's going to, I'm going to see if we can make this as interactive as possible. So we're going to be in three groups. I know it doesn't seem fair, but to God be the glory. Group one, group two. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're in three groups. And then we're going to be keeping points. So Precious is going to keep the points for each group. Group 1, Group 2, Group 3. And I'm not assuring you of any prize, but I mean, your reward is in heaven. Amen. <laughs> so digital evangelism. Our Bible passage is taken from Hebrews 10, 20, 21 to 24. Can we just read that, please? If you're there, you can read. Twenty-one to twenty-four, please. Hebrews ten, twenty-one to twenty-four. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in an sorry, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Thank you so much. Can we put our hands together for her? We have participation marks in group three. So our memory verse is taken from 2 Samuel 14, 14. Can we have it up on the screen so we can all read? 2 Samuel 14, 14. Just wait for that. Okay, can we all read 2 Samuel 14, 14? Well, we... Which cannot be gathered up again. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, Latin introduction. As of 20, January 2020, the total world population stood at 7.75 .7 billion. Smart mobile phone users are about 5.19 billion. Internet users, 5.54 billion. Active social media users, 3.80 billion. Statistics also show that every minute, about 1 million people log onto Facebook. 3.8 searches are made on Google, 4.5 million. 
videos viewed on YouTube and 347,000 scroll, users scroll Instagram. The Bible is clear that anyone who has a personal encounter with Jesus is called to be his witness. As you can see in Mark 16, 14 to 15 and Acts 1, 8. Can we open Acts 1, 8, please? Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness, witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So we have seen... We have seen... Um, from last week's topic of the Holy Spirit, you have to have the Holy Spirit. Nous avons vu euh, la dernière euh, la dernière fois le, notre thème sur le Saint Esprit. And it is a very big connection because you need to fill that void in you before you can go out to preach to someone else. On peut voir une connexion avec ce thème parce que tu dois être d'abord rempli du Saint-Esprit avant que tu ne puisses aller évangéliser quelqu'un d'autre. Okay. Et ce n'est que le Saint-Esprit qui peut combler ces vides. Ok, let's do our text review from Hebrews 10, 21 to 24. Nous allons faire notre revue de la lecture de Hébreu 10, 21-24. Um, the Bible states that we have, uh, we as believers, we have, there are five demands that are stated in this, in this passage from 21 to 24. I'm just going to read that again. Je vais juste relire les passages. Hebrews 10, 21. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Et puisque nous avons un souverain sacrificateur établi sur la maison de Dieu, approchons-nous avec cœur, un cœur sincère dans la plénitude de la foi, le cœur purifié d'une mauvaise conscience et le corps lavé d'une eau pure, retenons fermement la profession de notre espérance, car celui qui a fait la promesse est fidèle, veillons les uns sur les autres pour nous exciter à la charité et aux bonnes œuvres. Our demands as believers are as follows from the Bible passage. First of all, we have to join near to God with a sincere heart. Notre, notre demande ici en tant que chrétien, c'est que nous devons nous approcher de Dieu avec un, un cœur sincère. In full assurance, number two, in full assurance of faith, which is without doubt, without wavering, without fear. Deuxièmement, dans la plénitude de la foi, c'est-à-dire sans crainte, sans doute. Number three, having your heart cleansed from an evil conscience and all guilt. Troisièmement, nous devons avoir nos cœurs purifiés d'une mauvaise conscience. Number four, holding fast the confession of our hope in Christ. No, uh, quatre, retenons fermement, retenons fermement la profession de notre espérance en Christ. And number five, considering one another in order to stir up love and good works. Et cinq, cinquièmement, c'est de veiller sur les uns les autres pour, exciter, pour nous exciter à la charité et aux bonnes œuvres. Ok. And lesson outline one, which is biblical view of digital evangelism. And the first question in this activity is what is digital evangelism? Notre première grande ligne, c'est 
notre, le, le vie biblique de l'évangélisme digital. Ma question est de savoir c'est quoi l'évangélisme digital. So, you guys should remember when groups, group one, group two, group three, were taking participation, were taking, were recording the scores. So, first question, digital evangelism, anybody? Est-ce que quelqu'un peut nous dire c'est quoi l'évangélisme ou l'évangélisation digitale? What is digital evangelism? Anybody? Does anybody want to help their group? Save your group. And the marks. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. Uh, this is the act of witnessing Jesus Christ to people through the use of internet, social media, and uh, other uh, devices. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. C'est l'acte de témoigner Jésus-Christ, de rendre témoignage au nom de Jésus-Christ à travers l'Internet et d'autres médias sociaux. sociaux. Anybody else? Group 2? It's middle group. Ocha, you want to help save your people? <laughs> What is digital evangelism? Digital evangelism. So you want me to expand it on that? Yes, sir. Uh, digital evangelism is uh, more like the internet of a thing we are doing. And uh, I think it, it helps. Uh, like when you were starting your uh, the opening speech, you made mention of the areas um, covered by the internet, you know. Um, you said something about we have something, seven point something billion people in the world, and out of which five point something billion. I'm very sorry, I didn't catch the, I discovered that I'm getting old, so I'm forgetting things now. I, you said five point something billion um, makes use of internet, and uh, five point, some, some, um, point something billion made use of Facebook and the likes. So when we put everything together and we put it on uh, a statistic, we discover that um more than very close to 60 percent of every human being on the world in the world makes use of internet so uh we are in the era of the internet now there was an era in the bible forgive me if i'm digressing that was jesus's era now before jesus's era we have the era of the um the prophets now, when Jesus came, that was Jesus' era. Now, during that Jesus era, you can only reach Jesus if you are with Jesus. For example, there was a woman that was crying, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have, have mercy on me. Now, because Jesus had, was at that place, at that particular time, Jesus could hear him. Praise the Lord. When they said Lazarus was sick, they had to wait, 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 wait. They, place them on waiting list until Lazarus died. But eventually it became Lazarus's turn and Jesus came. Right? So now we are in the advent of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to wait for him to come. He's already here. He said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man should hear me knock and open the door of his heart, I will come in. So also we are in the advent of digital, um, the advent of internet, whereby everything can be disseminated at the flip of hand. Praise the Lord. So every believer now, we don't have an excuse not to do the work of God. We don't have an excuse not to talk to somebody about Jesus. As long as you are sending a message, you are using WhatsApp, you are using uh, any social media. If you are not social media compliant like myself, you are on WhatsApp, you can send message. So you, we can disseminate the gospel through that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Points for group two. Okay. So, thank you so much, sir. Um, thank you so much, sir. Um, uh, uh, as we continue reading, it is the strategic and deliberate use of the internet and social media platforms to preach the gospel. 
L'évangélisation digitale, c'est c'est l'utilisation volontaire et stratégique de l'Internet ou des médias sociaux, des plateformes des médias sociaux pour prêcher l'Évangile. Uh, the Bible describes various means adopted by the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles to reach their audience. La Bible décrit différents moyens adoptés par Christ et les apôtres pour atteindre leur audience. Apostle Paul used his writing in form of a text to write to the Colossians in Colossians chapter 4 verse 18. Apostle Paul a utilisé les écrits, les textes par message pour écrire aux Colossiens. Okay, next question. La question suivante. Um, let me make it tough a bit. So each, if, if you want to answer, you have to mention at least five methods that five different methods that were used in the Bible as a form of quote-unquote digital evangelism. Yes. Yes. If you want to, do you want, do you want to start? Do you understand my question? Okay. So we're looking at digital evangelism and we're going back to the Bible. So as we, I just read, Apostle Paul used his handwriting in form of a text message to write to the Colossians. That's one. So besides Paul, because <laughs> I just said Paul, besides Paul, let me reduce it to three. Give me three forms of digital evangelism that we can find in the Bible. The person, the form, the means, just if you say it and we can get it, we'll move on. Yeah. I hope you understand this kind of. I have to mention three digital. Evangelism in the Bible. La question de mentionner trois évangélisations, trois façons ou bien trois évangélisations digitales dans la Bible. Tink, 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 tink. Sorry. <laughs> Do you see digital kind of? You know, the digital in the Bible now and the digital of our age, it's not exactly the same definition yeah. because we have the internet and they didn't have the internet there. So like what means of evangelism? Let me remove digital. Well, yeah. What means of evangelism can you pick out from the Bible? Very sweet. Uh, Very je vais juste uh, uh, ôter les mots digital. Si je vais dire quels sont les moyens, les trois moyens d'évangélisation qu'on peut trouver dans la Bible. Yes, group two. Guys, uh... um, there was an incident that happened in the Bible, in the two incidents. Um, um, a servant took something he should not take. Gehazi took something from somebody and he lied to Elisha. Elisha was able to know because Elisha, Elisha was digitalized by the Holy Spirit. On another occasion, thank you. On another occasion, there were this couple that sold their stuffs, their land and everything, and they lied to Peter there about. And they said they brought it all. Because Peter was heavily digitalized by the Holy Spirit. He said, why did you have to lie? So the Holy Spirit has been existing. The internet has been existing before the days of your but it became it came out in the form of internet now but in those days men of god who are spirit led you know it takes it takes a spirit man there was a time i went to the camp and a, um somebody who was wearing a pair of high glasses many years back at the redemption camp and the glasses fell and amongst the crowd the man of god said oh thank you jesus daddy said there's somebody here your piece of high glasses has fallen daddy said you don't need it anymore and the woman looked, looked, and that, that is the, that is the digit of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Yes. So in my group, I think I will mention uh, mouth to mouth, like uh, the Samaritan woman. So she went to spread the gospel that I met 
Jesus. I met the prophets, the men that was prophesied to come. It, it was also a kind of evangelism because uh, he told people. Um, another thing, as I can mention the Bible, apart from the Samaritan woman, uh, in the Old Testament, the trumpet was used as a kind of sending a message to people to come and gather to worship God. It was also a kind of evangelism. Praise the Lord. Mr. Viela. Pastor Viela. Okay, okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, so in the New Testament, we can see that uh, Apostle Paul wrote different letters to the seven churches. So the Ephesians, to the Corinthians, to the Corinthians, to the Corinthians. Yeah, he was writing letters to all of them. This was him trying to correct them, trying to evangelize to them, trying to rebook them, and it's also a means of evangelism. Another form of evangelism I would like to uh, say is the house to house. Mm -hmm. Like in the early church, the Bible says the apostles were in one accord. They broke bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And uh, the second type that I would like to say about digital evangelism was introduced by Jesus by the faith of the centurion you know the centurion said you don't have to come to my house just speak the word and the Bible says he spoke the word and that same hour the servant of the centurion was healed praise the name of praise the Lord, the Lord. Just to add to my group, because it's the only one I can think of, um, is the Ten Commandments with Moses. So, kind of, it's a form of evangelism as in his, pretty much telling them what to do and what not to do to just glorify the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, when it comes to evangelism, what come, two come to my mind. One is Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The Holy Spirit caught Philip. So, it's not something that could have happened normally. If Philip were to walk, he wouldn't even know the eunuch was passing that street. And one, if he were to go there, it would have taken time for him to go there because he didn't have like the best means of transportation. So that's one. So the Holy Spirit took him there, caught him in the spirit and took him there to explain that message to the Ethiopian eunuch. Another one is Cornelius, Peter and Cornelius. God sent one message to Peter, sent another message to Cornelius. You guys have to meet. And like that, like that, Cornelius and his entire family they saved. And I remember just one more, Paul and Ananias. When Paul first met Jesus on the way to Damascus, God also messaged Ananias that somebody is coming to meet you, help him. And it was a very important thing because that was the foundational part of Paul's faith. And if he had missed that foundational part, there would be a lot would have been wrong. And we know how instrumental Paul was in the spreading of the gospel. And that was really important. And as God sent to Ananias, God also sent a message to Paul. So it's like, even when we didn't have the internet, God was, it's God's gospel, it's his own gospel, and he takes it into his hands, and he was always taking it into his hands and using his power to spread the gospel. Praise the Lord. So just a few words, um, when Jesus was on the boat as well, he saw two boats, and he was like, okay, I'm going to preach the gospel to these people here. So there was that, and also when he, he stood on a, mount, on a hill, to preach the gospel as well to people that were around him. Um, Jésus aussi, il a pris le, le bateau de Pierre pour prêcher l'évangile. Il a aussi été sur euh, la colline, aussi il a monté sur la colline pour prêcher aussi aux gens. Paul also, there were also preachings from Paul in the ship. Um, in prison, through town, going house to house, as we mentioned before. Et c'est l'exemple de Paul qui a aussi prêché aussi dans les bateaux, dans la prison. Okay, second outline two. Optimizing the digital world for evangelism and discipleship. Op Deuxième grande ligne, c'est optimiser le monde digital pour l'évangélisation et les disciples là. What does this mean? I am not afraid of the gospel of Christ, meaning I can 
speak to anybody anywhere about the gospel of Christ. L'apôtre Paul dit, je n'ai pas honte de l'évangile de Christ. Je peux parler de Christ partout. Okay, just because of time, I'm just going to read through it. Um, there are positive aspects of social networking. It has overcome great hurdles and barriers to penetrate through the borders of the most hostile communities of the world, even those against the gospel. Il y a plusieurs aspects de des de médias sociaux et ça a vaincu le grand, des grandes barrières pour, prene, pour pénétrer à travers les, euh, les, les frontières dans les communautés hostiles du monde et même celles qui étaient contre l'évangile. For Christians, social media sites can be productively harnessed for kingdom expansion. Pour les chrétiens, les, médias sociaux, les sites et médias sociaux peuvent être productifs pour l'expansion du royaume. Social media allows us to reconnect with people we may have lost contact with and open new avenues for sharing Christ, such that we can influence the views of others by what we post, bringing encouragement and spiritual guidance to others using friends, our friends list, Facebook or WhatsApp status updates, or tweets to pray regularly for friends and their needs. Les médias sociaux nous permettent de reconnecter avec les gens euh, avec qui nous avons perdu le contact et ouvrir encore d'autres endroits pour partager les noms de Christ. Euh, comme tel, nous pouvons influencer la vie d'autres personnes par ce que nous postons, ce que nous, euh, nous apportons, nos encouragements et aussi nos nos orientations spirituelles aux autres euh, en utilisant nos amis, le liste, en utilisant le Facebook, le WhatsApp, nos statuts et les tweets. Nous pouvons prier aussi régulièrement avec les frères et avec les amis et aussi leurs besoins. We can all be writers, content creators and publishers now. This means that when it comes to creating content, content for evangelism and discipleship, The role is no longer restricted to pat pastors, theologians, and other trained professionals. Nous pouvons tous être des écrivains, des de créateurs de contenu, de publicateurs maintenant. Euh, cela veut dire que nous venons à créer un contenu d'évangélisation, de discipola, et les rôles n'est plus encore seulement euh, les plus seulement réservés aux pasteurs, aux théologiens et aux, et aux d'autres professionnels bien entraînés. Therefore, making use of digital means to further the gospel work means that more church members can be missionaries. The presence of the church online can be stronger and more people will know the saving love of Jesus. Donc, l'utilisation des moyens digitaux pour évangéliser, les, pour euh, expandre l'évangile veut dire que plus de membres plus mo beaucoup de membres des églises de, peuvent devenir des missionnaires et la présence de l'église sur la ligne sera très forte et beaucoup de gens connaîtront Jésus et l'amour de Jésus et vont être sauvés So the world has been made into a Evangelism has been made more easier through the means of the internet, sharing the word on your phone while on your bed, just send a prayer, post it on your WhatsApp status, your Facebook startup status. I know my mom does that, like sometimes when she reads the Bible, she'll just post what she learns and it will be for whoever it's supposed to be for. Or child does that too. She sends she posts a lot on her WhatsApp status to motivate people. Le monde aujourd'hui est devenu facile, même l'évangélisation est devenue facile à, à cause de, de ce monde digital. Vous pouvez même poster une, un passage de l'écriture sur votre WhatsApp, vous pouvez même envoyer ça. Donc on peut tous le faire. So we don't necessarily need to, if you're confined in your home, like this period of isolation, um, COVID that happened, You could still reach out to a lot of people. A lot of people logged online. I feel like there were more internet users during the whole COVID year than, respectively, if I should say, any other year. 
So that's even instead of people going online to look for worldly things, they can catch the word of God as well, get enlightened in the Holy Spirit. Et l'utilisation de l'Internet aujourd'hui a rendu l'évangélisation un peu facile, même pendant les Covid, lorsqu'on était confiné dans les maisons, beaucoup de gens utilisaient leur téléphone pour envoyer les messages, les passages bibliques aux autres. En summary, digital evangelism is cost efficient and effective. L'évangélisation digitale, c'est est un coût euh, efficace et si euh, suffisant. Digital evangelism should be incorporated with traditional forms of evangelism. It does not replace the traditional means such as one-on-one -on -one mass mass or tract evangelism. L'évangélisation digitale doit devrait être intégrée avec euh, le forme traditionnelle de l'évangélisation. Ça ne remplace pas le méthode traditionnelle comme euh, euh, le N1 ou bien bouche à l'oreille, euh, l'évangélisation en masse ou bien les tracts euh, d'évangélisation. Uh, assignment reminder, there is an assignment at the end of at the end of the every Sunday school topic. So today we're going to be submitting our assignment to Sister Precious. Please wave your hand so we can see you. Thank you. And is there any questions for Rando? Y a-t-il une question avant que je ne puisse clore? Praise God. Yeah, so um, I live in MCC, Maritime Christian College, and sometimes last week, can you hear me? Time. Okay, sorry. Sometimes um, about two weeks ago, a, a new woman came in, a very old woman. She came from Ontario, and she preached to my Indian friend. She just were having a conversation and she asked him if he was a Christian. And after the conversation, my Indian friend told me that he felt really uncomfortable during the conversation. And then from experience, I figured that when we reflect Christ to other people, it's kind of from what I've seen, I don't know other people experience it, it's adding to their hearts the more. And just like from scriptures, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and quite a number of a lot of people. So I don't know how to put the question. The more we preach to them, the more their hearts get other. That's just it. The more we try to talk to them about Christ, the more because what I gave myself as an explanation was that these people were born with a kind of particular mindset. Let's say I've someone has been Muslim throughout since childbirth, it would be very difficult for the person to just swap and you just brought something. And so my question is, how do we best, because how do we best present Christ to them in a way that they will accept? Because the more we try to do it, the more we post on social media, the more they see us as, oh, one of those religions that are trying to bring me to themselves. So how do we bring them to Christ? And because... Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation. But from, anyways, the question is, how do we best present Christ to them in a way that it's not adding their hearts the more? In a way that, because if their hearts, psychologically, if someone's heart is closed, if everyone's heart is locked towards me, there's nothing I can do to make her listen to me, yeah, unlock it, exactly. So, praise the Lord. La question, c'est comment présenter Christ de manière à ne pas endurcir le cœur de nos amis, d'autres amis qui sont des bouddhistes, des musulmans, qui ne croient pas au Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Comment est-ce qu'on peut évangéliser, évangéliser, les évangéliser sans pour autant endurcir leur cœur? Praise the Lord. Bible says. Um, uh, a man's gift will make a way for him, right? And bring him before who? Great man. And I think it's in Proverbs, he said, uh, giving gifts open doors. <laughs> now, let me now relate back to your question. How do we now open the door of their heart by giving gifts? What kind of gifts? Is that the question? Yeah. Um, if you notice the tide now, Things are changing. People don't, when you go to meet people and tell them, I want to talk to you about Jesus, they will tell them, I'm busy. So it is, it is, 
needful for Christians too, to re-strategize. Praise the Lord. Look at what is going on in the world now. Somebody thought they are going to take on the nation in just 72 hours. And look at now how many hours now. The tides are turning. The generals that postulated that that will just go in, will march in, and they'll be giving us flowers and everything, they all died in the battle. What am I trying to say? Um, we Christians, it's high time we started strategizing when it comes to evangelism. What is that gift? Show kindness to somebody. Little did you know that we are the Bible that people watch. There is a 97-year-old man. I hope this is not on YouTube, whatever. Okay. There's a 97-year-old man who lives in front of my house, and each time they bring something out, they, you know, the, the cat, the whatever, you just discover that the moment I bring out mine, I'll take ease. And it has been going on for a long time. So one day he just approached my wife and said, he wants to invite me for, wants to invite me for what? For beer. And my wife said, no, he doesn't drink alcohol. He doesn't do anything. Said, said that guy is fantastic. What makes him fantastic? Because he sees some things. I, whatever thing I do for myself, because I realize it's old. Anything I do for myself, do it for him. You understand? And do you know that the man, anytime he goes for groceries, he comes, he crosses his house, he still drives, he lives alone, he will bring chocolate for me. He said, you a wonderful family. So, tell me, if I want to talk to him about Jesus, will he not listen? I don't even need to tell him about Jesus, because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So I've been giving some gifts to him. And what is that gift? There's a song I, I, I grew up with as a young Christian. It said, if you see a sister standing by the road with a heavy load, la, 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 la. You've got to try little kindness. Show little kindness. Shine as a light for everyone to see. You cannot shine if you don't. It's not by preaching that you shine. What do you want to say? Uh, Bishop Okote has said it all. Those big, big grammar. There's nothing you can say again. <laughs> what do you want to preach? But you can do kindness to somebody. You see somebody carrying heavy load. Help. You are preaching. That Indian will listen to you when you help him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, another thing is that we can also just you're not supposed to force the gospel on anybody. Preach to them in love. That's what evangelism is about. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Father Almighty, we thank you for your word. We thank you for everything that has occurred this morning. We thank you, Lord Almighty, because you're with us. You're answering our questions. You're lightening our burdens, oh Lord. You're putting your word in our hearts. Father, we pray as we lift the service into your hands. Now, Lord, you take absolute control of it. And we feel your spirit. We feel you with us, O oh Lord. And Lord, everything that shall be learned today, everything that shall be said today, it will remain in our hearts in the name of Jesus. We shall walk and act on it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Everything that shall be done today, Lord, we lift it into your hands to take absolute control, to give us your word, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba, Abba Father. Thank you, Everlasting King. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' most precious name we've prayed. Amen. Amen.